Let's get up to 200 likes, man. Stacy Abrams in the building, man. Good. <laughs> Look at that gap, man. God damn, man. You could see that shit from space, man. If if there was if there was space, you could see that shit from space, man. Yeah, her sister's a judge, man. And this is the sister's husband. This is the Stacy's Stacy Abrams sister's a judge, and this is her sister's husband, man. Yeah, man. I think Santa's gonna put um Stacy Abrams' brother-in-law on his naughty list, man. You on you on Santa's naughty list, my G. Um, <laughs> Stacey Abrams' brother-in-law, Jimmy Gardner, has been arrested on human trafficking allegations. <laughs> Damn, Jimmy. According to Tampa police, Gardner was engaging in sexual acts with a 16-year-old girl and even assaulted her. Gardner reportedly met with the minor at his hotel room and invited her to his room. When she arrived, Gardner offered money in exchange for sex. <laughs> That's human trafficking? That's called tricking, man. <laughs> traff tricking. That's called traff tricking. The victim initially agreed, but later told Gardner she no longer wanted to engage, and he became angry. Gardner advised the victim that she needed to leave his hotel room. Bitch, get out. The two got involved in a verbal altercation that escalated to a physical dispute after Gardner placed his hands around the victim's neck, impeding her breathing. This isn't his first run-in with the law, guys. In 1987, he was convicted of sexual assault of two women in West Virginia. But he was exonerated. <laughs> he was exonerated, y'all. In 2016, two years after he was released, he married federal judge Leslie Abrams Gardner, the sister of Stacey. This dude did 30 years in the can and then got exonerated, man. Shout out to Cool Cat, man. He say salute. What's up? Ah. Yeah, man, we got another exonerated fella, man. <laughs> What's his name, man? Jimmy. Jimmy Gardner, man. Hey, let's 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 just do a, 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 a who thinks that Jimmy Gardner was innocent of the 1987 sexual assault, man? That he was exonerated for, man. Press one if you think he was innocent of the 1987 assault. Yeah, okay, so we got a couple guys think he's innocent of the 1987 assault, man. So let's go check it out, man. Let's see what happened in 1980. Hey, look, man, he got exonerated, man. Let's go see what happened in 1987, man. Now, this woman who's hosting this show, she's a biracial woman who was raised by her single white mom. Welcome to the Griot. I'm Ebony K. Williams. The United A biracial woman who was raised by my single white mom. Welcome to the Griot. I'm Ebony K. Williams. The United States has the highest incarceration rate in the world. And of course, if you're a black man in this country, we know that will never mean anything good for you. 
A black man is six times more likely than a white man to be incarcerated. And even worse, sometimes those black men that are incarcerated had nothing to do with the crime they're being charged with. <laughs> Black men are six times more likely to be incarcerated than white men. You know, I wonder why, man. See, I'm a solutions-oriented person, man. I hear something like that, and it makes me scratch my head. I wonder why. Maybe it'll come to me, man. Um, Charged with. According to the National Registry of Exonerations, while black people only make up 13% of the U.S. population, they make up more than 53% of the 3,200 exonerations. Now, this isn't an issue that impacts just the individuals who are arrested, charged, and convicted. See, wrongful convictions impact family members on both sides, the person wrongfully accused, and sometimes for the family of the victim. I'm joined today by a very special guest, He's going to help us discuss the issues surrounding the wrongfully convicted in this country. Jimmy Gardner is a motivational speaker and emotional intelligence coach. <laughs> that nigga been home for two weeks. <laughs> that nigga been home for two weeks and you already a, a motivational speaker and an emotional intelligence coach, man. This nigga just did 30 years in a big house, man. issues surrounding the wrongfully convicted in this country. Jimmy Gardner is a motivational speaker and emotional intelligence coach. He was also wrongfully convicted for a crime he didn't commit. Jimmy was sentenced to serve 110 years in prison, but was released after serving 27 years in prison. Jimmy, in your case, uh, you know, there was no forensic evidence connecting you to this crime. The DNA uh, wasn't there. The description uh, did not match you. And also, you had an alibi. You were actually pitching in a baseball game when the crime was being committed. How in the world were you ever convicted? Well, first off, thank you, uh, Ms. Williams, for having me on the show. And, you know, my conviction has a myriad of, of, of things that occurred. And uh, to correct you on uh, forensic evidence, there was forensic evidence in my case, but that evidence was actually changed by one of the state's key witnesses, uh, a forensic expert, DNA expert. But um, <laughs> I gotta give him credit for that, man. He's like, yeah, man, it was it was forensic evidence. <laughs> Salute, man. I ain't even gonna be mad at bro, man. Salute, man. <laughs> I get salute, bro. He kept it real right there, man. I ain't even mad at bro. Of things that occurred. And uh, to correct you on the uh, forensic evidence, there was forensic evidence in my case, but that evidence was actually changed by one of the state's key witnesses, uh, a forensic expert, DNA expert. But, um, you know, my case went through identification, uh, I was identified as not being the perpetrator three times by one of the uh, one of the victims. And there were two victims in my case, and uh, on one of the cases, like you like you stated, I was pitching in a baseball game, and uh, I was at the baseball park. And the state's theory was that I left during an inning and went and assaulted this woman and came back to the baseball park being unnoticed, which is you know was, was ridiculous. But I, on the other case. You know, it happened early in the morning, and my alibi was that I was at home in my apartment with my um, with my roommate. But uh, that's the case I was convicted on. On the other case, I was found not guilty, and uh, I was sentenced to 110 years, as you've stated. <laughs> now, listen, man, I'm not trying to motherfucking. I kind of like the guy, man. He he kept it real, man. If you listen to him closely, he he keeping it a buck. Um, as much as, as much as a criminal would. How you get jammed up for two rapes, man? I know a lot of gliders. They don't, they they not son, so they 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 just hear this stuff and they think, oh, hey, man, there's a rape, and they just go around and 
start rounding up black dudes. It's not really like that, man. Police, they got techniques to find out who did the shit, man. They don't have to just go round up a bunch of black dudes and take them in the back room and did you do it and shit like that. Put the hot light in their face and shit. Give them a cigarette. It's very hard to get jammed up for two rapes, man. God damn, one. You could go your whole life without getting jammed up for, for a rape, man. Press one, man. <laughs> I was pitching in the baseball game, and uh, I was at the baseball park, and the state's theory was that I left during the inning and went and assaulted this woman and came back to the baseball park being unnoticed, which is, you know, was ridiculous. But I, on the other case, you know, it happened early in the morning, and my alibi was that I was at home in my apartment with my... Um, with my roommate, but uh, that's the case I was convicted on. On the other case, I was found not guilty. And uh, I was sentenced to 110 years, as you've stated. And uh, the process was was very arduous, you know, to say the least. And, and there, there's just, uh, it's so Yeah, many- man, it must have been. <laughs> it must have been the seven in the street. It must have been the seventh inning stretch, man, when um he left the game and raped her. <laughs> Take me out to the ball game. <laughs> You've stated. And uh, the process was, was very arduous, you know, to say the least. And, and there there's just uh, it's so many crippling cases like this throughout our, our United States of America that involve black men going to prison based on faulty forensic evidence, uh, uh, eyewitness testimony, uh, prosecutorial misconduct, a number of issues that arise, but they're, um, they're, mostly, uh, they're mostly happening with uh, young, young black men in America. So, Jimmy, let me ask you this. Let's uh, go back uh, in time a little bit. You were, like you said, one case you were acquitted, not guilty, great. Uh, One you were convicted of wrongfully. (laughs) (laughs) Look at her try to process that shit. She tried like, damn, it was too long? God damn. (laughs) Yo, man, I ain't going to lie to you, man. Listen, man. Yo, man hard to get jammed up for like that, man, if you ain't had nothing to do with it, man. It's, it's very hard, man. If you wasn't on the scene, like, let's just let's just say you ain't do it, but you wasn't like, you ain't had nothing. It's just somebody got raped somewhere and they came in. Nah, man. Somehow you something, man. Tell us about what you felt like when you heard uh, the jury say guilty and then talk about what your appeals process looked like. When that jury came back after four and a half days and said guilty on on one set of charges and not guilty on the other set of charges, it was like the air was let out of my entire body. And then to hear my my mother and my grandmother screaming, you know, no, no, no. I mean, it was just like the ancestors came through me and, and, and I screamed in the courtroom back to my great, my, my grandmother and my mom, no, do not let these people see you cry. Don't let them see you do this. And I, I was in my emotion. I don't know where that came from, but I screamed that out back to them. And uh, I just had knew I had to keep my head up high and I had to not show, you know, that I was being affected in, 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 in too much of a negative way. But uh, I, I continued to proceed and I knew I had a battle of he- ahead of me. And uh, that battle took off in 1990 after my conviction. And uh, I went through through uh, 11 attorneys, uh, all in the state court. And none of those attorneys filed a habeas corpus on my own behalf. I filed six habeas corpus on my own behalf. And ne- not you yourself. Them, yes. And not one yeah. of them ever got re- reviewed. I received four orders from the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals stating that the lower court should give me a full evidentiary hearing four times. 
1996, 1999, 2002, and 2006, and I did not receive any of that. So I went through a period of 23 years without having any review in state court, and I went on a prayer and filed into federal court, and uh, I got I got accepted into federal court. What I did was I filed a federal petition, a United States Supreme Court petition, and I filed something in the West Virginia Supreme Court, and I said, hey, I'm throwing everything out there. Something's going to stick. And the federal court actually accepted me in un under an inordinate delay in the year of 2013. And it took uh, uh, three more years for me to actually get relief on March 25th, 2016. Jimmy, there's so much more we're going to talk about about your case and, and broadly what you would want other people who have been wrongfully convicted that are still inside and in their process. What do you want them to know? Uh, and what does healing look like once you get on the outside? Stay with us. Mm. What does healing look like once you get on the outside? Mm. Hey, man, press one if you want to know what healing looks like once you get on the outside, man. <laughs> Anybody want to see what healing looks like when you get on the outside? <laughs> now the brother-in-law, former Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams, is in the Hillsborough County Jail. 57-year-old Jimmy Gardner is a youth motivational speaker who tonight is charged with human trafficking of a minor. Investigators say on Friday, Gardner invited a 16-year-old girl back to his hotel room at the Renaissance Hotel International Plaza, then offered money in exchange for sexual acts. They say the teen initially agreed, but later told Gardner she no longer wanted to do it. Police say this caused a fight, leading to Gardner choking the teen. She later called police, which led to Gardner's arrest. Hey, wait a second, man. Stacey Abrams is totally against choking, man. She was a big... She was really upset when that um when George Floyd got choked, man, allegedly, man. And Eric Gardner, man. Stacey Abrams will be real pissed at you, dude, man. She don't like choking, man. She's on the record about that too, man. <laughs> like I I I you ain't know that Stacey Abrams is gonna be real mad at you if you choke somebody, man. She's Stacey Abrams, man. She on a record, man. She made a big fuss about choking for the last 10 years, man. And you gonna go do that shit knowing you her brother-in-law. Nigga, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to not like you no more, man. You're told Gardner she no longer wanted to do it. Police say this caused a fight, leading to Gardner choking the teen. She later called police, which led to Gardner's arrest. In 1987, Gardner was convicted of sexually assaulting two women he spent 27 years in prison before being exonerated in 2016. Gardner is scheduled to make his first appearance in Tampa tomorrow. <laughs> Yo, man. Out of 10, Tampa police. I ain't even gonna lie, man. I don't, like, I ain't even gonna lie, man. I feel bad for now the brother, brother, man. I feel bad for the brother, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He asked the little girl, man, he said, man, he, he, she said she agreed to the shit first, man, and then she reneged, man. <laughs> he agreed to the shit first, then she reneged, man. <laughs> 